In the United States, national rates of anxiety and depression in children aged 3 to 17 jumped 26% between 2016 and 2020. After the onset of the COVID-19 pandemic, the crisis became so acute that the country's Surgeon General declared another pandemic one of youth mental health issues. Since then, a compilation of data called, called Kids Count has been published, developed by the Annie E. Casey Foundation. The report features statistics from 50 states collated to determine how children and families are faring in light of the challenges facing them. In the USVI, the St. Croix Foundation was tapped to lead the Kids Count initiative in the territory. They have since published the 2020 Kids Count USVI snapshot, as well as the 2021 Kids Count data book. A lot of it is based on um, American Community Survey um, that is not conducted here in the, in the Virgin Islands and other data sources that we don't always have in the Virgin Islands. However, we do publish uh, a data book and we, we publish, for example, the data book in uh, last December, we published the 2021 Kids Count data book for the USVI. Uh, we will be publishing uh, shortly the 2022 USVI Kids Count data book. And we do have data in the uh, national database for any case. So for those areas where um, the U.S. Virgin Islands has collected data, uh, we've updated. So if you go to the national database for any case, you will find uh, updated Virgin Islands data uh, in areas um, where we have. So, you know, uh, births, we have deaths, we have um, uh, school enrollment. These things that we do have um, are updated in the national database. So we, we publish a book. It's not in time with the national um, uh, data book, but our USBI data is included in the national data set um, where applicable. The 2021 Kids Count data book was published in December of that year and features data from the Youth Behavior Risk Survey that was conducted in 2018. The national um, NEKC organization, um, um, you know, they, they did some follow-up research in, in terms of national trends um, you know, to to kind of uh, buttress what we were, you know, what we had found. So, you know, there there is uh, concern nationally in terms of mental health. We know that's a that's an area that we don't have a whole lot of data on in the U.S. Virgin Islands, the publicly available data um, in terms of the services that are provided to the students um, or to the children of the Virgin Islands, and so. You know, we, we published that data in December. Uh, the National um, Anti-KC Foundation uh, also published, you know, um, their own research in terms of the, their concerns with mental health. So we're, we're pointing in the same direction in terms of we think there's a there's a big need. And, and our role uh, at Kids Count is to work with the, uh, public agencies, um, nonprofits, you know, anyone who provides services for children to try to... Uh, improve data collection around mental health. Santiago says it was a challenge getting data in the USVI, noting that a new youth risk behavior survey was something that would, would be critical to conducting assessments in the aftermath of the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, I suspect that it would align with, you know, the national trends in terms of having a, an add-on effect. And so you have COVID, but, you know, we know our, our the children in the U.S. Virgin Islands also went through the, the Irma and Maria. And so there's a lot of trauma um, that's there. And, and we, we called attention to it. But, it you know, a youth risk behavior survey, an updated one would be great. Um, you know, and, and there's other things that, that we could do in terms of data collection. St. Croix Foundation President Deanna James said the data was an urgent call to action. Kennedy, I think all of us are doing something, right? Um, whether we are doing it in a coherent and cohesive way, I will say no, we are not. Um, and and the hope is that like all the, the pieces of the puzzle are put together in a way that um, leverages whatever scarce resources we have in a way that like has deep, deep impact around how we are supporting and serving our children. In the Virgin Islands, I believe it's really about anywhere about mm -hmm. how do we make connections mm -hmm. and how do we do those within the context of, of, our, of our environment. And, um, and in the Virgin Islands, there are certainly a lot of risk factors, but there are also a lot of resilience factors that I don't think uh, as a larger community, as a territory, we are always taking full advantage of because 
we're not necessarily, as Deanna said, leveraging all of our assets in the way that they can contribute uh, to, uh, to making the well-being of, of children and families a priority. One of the things that I think is, is really important is the fact that um, we have to do a better job of connecting um, all of the various sources of support and resilience, and especially in the, in the um, in this current generation, uh, Generation Z, as they call it, and Annie Casey recently, you'll find it on the web, did a, a piece on Generation Z and mental health. So I think one of the things that we have to do is continually to lift up um, what it is that we know to be uh, resilience factors. We need to continue to lift those up and connect those through the nonprofit sector, private sector, and all of the public sector and, and ways that we can, we can move forward and leverage those so that uh, all of our children are, and that's, that's the goal of Kids Count, is to not simply um, report just about some of the children, but about all of the children and keep the focus and the needle focused on all of our children. One of the top priorities for the USVI Kids Count team is using the data to spur relevant action and working collectively to ensure children in the territory are supported in a healthy manner.